Hi, I came back to record a second video. This time I want to go over the formula method. Okay, so the direction sheet says in the formula box at the bottom of your template, follow the directions for the compound interest formula as shown in the prototype. Where is that formula? Maybe I need to go back up and see if this picture that I minimized has the formula. If not, I'll just open up the textbook. Mm, okay, I see it. Um, I'm going to zoom in so that you and I can all see the formula here, okay? Oh, sorry. Um, I did type something um, in my Excel, but I'm going to go back and fix it because there was something that they wanted us to type in specifically. I mean, if I'm grading your work, it doesn't matter. But if anybody else is watching this video to get some help, I don't want you to get, you know, point stopped for not following the direction perfectly. So if you could, please change this to like this box right here, this to C25, it shouldn't be 25 though, I tell you, this is, I think, something happened here. It should be C, oh my eyes are, it should be C26 plus D26. We should be C26 plus D26. And if I copy that over here, that is going to be equal to E26 amount. And that's going to pop up as this number, 2,095.60. Okay? Um... You know, guys, what I'm noticing is that the screenshot from the prototype on the direction and the actual cell numbers are different. So either I downloaded something wrong, and I added an extra column or something. I think, I think we all are working with the same Excel template. So you will have to type in C26 plus D26 instead of C25 plus D25. And that number, if you want to check, uh, should come out to be 2,095 and 60 cents. Now, I was going to go look up the formula from the box, but here um, they gave you that the formula is 1,500 times one plus 0 0.075 divided by 4 raised to the 18th power, okay? If I copy this and put it in the blue box, you know, starting from the equal sign, I'm going to put that in the, the box over here and hit enter. It should give us the same exact amount, 2,000. 95 and 60. I really want to do cell referencing for this. Um, and I think I will. Okay. So this is where you may have issue. Well, you, you work, you work with your instructor, but for my students, um, I want this formula to work for your different principal and APR amount. So I want you to do this for me, okay? Instead of 1500, instead of typing 1500, I want you guys to type in, um, get rid of that 1500. I want you to type in the actual box name that has the principle, so D3. Click on D3. Oh, whoopsie, whoopsie, sorry. D3. But in front of D, type in a dollar sign. In front of 3, type in a dollar sign. Okay? And milk, then... Milk, milk, milk. Get a cup. And 
multiplication symbol stays the same, one plus stay the same, but instead of that APR that we wrote down as 0 0.0075, get rid of that, but type in the cell name that has the APR, which is D5. That's the cell that I want you to name, D5. So, put D5, but put dollar sign in front of D and dollar sign in front of 5. Now, for the compounding period, um, I think this template is set up so that we're using quarterly compounding. So I don't really think we should change that four to this cell. I mean, I don't, I don't think I will change that. We can definitely sell reference, but it's gonna stay. It's gonna remain as four the whole time. So, all right. And then it says multiply by eighteen. I'll raise that to eighteenth power. Um, that will stay the same. But I would rather have you using this formula. Um, because if we do, if we enter that. This is going to give us um, the, the, the amount, um, the correct amount for all of our different principal and APR, okay? Um, I don't think they ask us to do that, but I think it will be nice if we do that. So I want you to zoom in or stop the video so that you can see what I typed in here. Um, what I did over here was instead of using these static numbers, the numbers that are just 1507.5 APR, I said, hey, Excel, use whatever the principal amount that I will be entering in D3 and use whatever the APR that I will be entering in D5. And I'm going to have different numbers entered in here. And when I enter different numbers, I want those numbers to change. That's what I'm doing here. Okay. So that is the formula. I know your eyes are going to be a little bit you have to I hope you can read this kit okay all right that was the formula method and as you can see this amount and this amount is the same okay I don't think this is long so I think I'm gonna continue with the Excel function okay the Excel function that we're gonna use is the future value function so they're telling us to just use this but again, this is much more difficult because the cell numbers are all off, right? So, all right, we're going to, have to do this very carefully. Now, the future value function, start with an equal sign in the green box, okay? Um, we have to put a negative in front of it because I'll show you. If we don't, we're going to get a negative amount. But after an equal sign, type in a negative symbol and type in FV. And you can click on the function name future value. But I'm so hot. Okay, I'll see you later. Maybe get some ice cream. No, some ice. Okay, later. See you later, Noah. Oh, it's the first day of summer. All right, so open parenthesis. And what they want here, I don't know if you guys can see this small font here. But when I open up the parenthesis, they tell me what they want to have. They want the rate first. Now, where did we type in the rate? Remember, the rate was typed in this box right here in D5. So click on that box, D5. Okay, when I do that, D5 showed up right here. After D5, put a comma. What they are asking next, hold on a second, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I gotta go back, gotta go back. If I just do D5, then I am using an annual percentage rate. I have to remember, we're, we're using a quarterly rate. So could you please go back and delete the comma and divide that APR by four. I forgot to convert it into the quarterly rate. Um, I can do, type in four here, but I remember having the four, um, as the compounding period in D4. So you click on that D4 or that number four. So what you will have in that cell is D5 slash D4. That's the quarterly rate. I almost forgot and used the annual percentage rate. But we have to divide the APR by four to convert it into the quarterly rate. 
Whew, almost missed that part. All right, the next one is asking for n per. n per is the number of compounding period. Um, so where could that be found? Okay, let me see. Look, that's the number of compounding period. Let me zoom out. Um, we are looking at um, 18 quarters, aren't we? We're trying to figure out the amount of money that we have after 18 quarters. So I'm going to go to my cell and find 18. See, on column B, row number 26, we have the number 18, right? You click on that. How many compounding periods are we looking at? 18 quarters. So the second entry after that D5 slash D4 comma should be B26. Put another comma, the next number, the next input they are asking for is called PMT. That's the payment amount. Are we making monthly payment into this investment account? Or are we just putting a big lump sum of money in the beginning and just waiting for our money to grow? Well, in this case, we're not making any quarterly payments. Any quarterly payments are made. So type in a zero, okay? Now, this is, I think, covered in one of the chapter later, very later on, okay? So it feels kind of awkward that we're going over this future value function um, so early in the semester. But hey, it's a good preview because this future value, present value, these functions will show up later in Math 154, at least when I was teaching it in the classroom. But um, so if this is a brand new thing to you. I hope you're watching this and I hope this is somewhat making sense. And then I'm going to go and put another comma here. Okay. The last thing they ask me is the present value, PV, of this investment. How much money is in this account? Well, we start with how much money? 1500 So you want to click on these three. Okay? So I'll show you the finalized formula here. Um, you can close the parenthesis if you want. Close it. But that is what you're going to need to type in for Excel function. Okay? So equal sign, negative. FV, open parenthesis, the first input should be D5 slash D4, which stands for the quarterly rate, comma, B26, how many quarters later are you looking at? 18 quarters, okay, comma, zero, because we're not making any quarterly payments into this investment, comma, the last amount is how much are we starting with? And that's $1,500. So I could see all these in the prototype screenshots are a little bit off. But if you're watching this video, I think you'll be all right. That is the formula you will need to type in for Excel function. Guys, when I hit enter, what number should I see? I better see 2,095 and 60 cents. Let's hit enter. Yay, that's good. So I'll go ahead and type in the formula that I used here, okay, so that someone can read the formula. But that's it for the exploration or the prototype thing. So I think what I'm going to do now is change it back to my own principle and APR rate, okay? So hold on, because oh, I forgot my numbers. <laughs> numbers i'm gonna go back to do a sign up sheet i know i signed up for number 13 but what was the principle um sue signed up for number 13 sue's principle was 180 and you're gonna see something beautiful when i change that to 180 everything will change look 180 hit enter all of those changed okay my apr that i signed up for was 6.7 and look at that. And not only that all these changed, but if I zoom in over here, um, three method gives me the exact same answers. So that's what I should be seeing. So talking about my beautiful student, like let's say Lindsay is doing her homework. If Lindsay types her 
principal of 500 and APR of 6.9, Miss Lindsay, she better see 680.25 for all three boxes. Let's talk about our Daniel. Daniel's doing his homework and type in 720 for his principal and APR of 5.9. Daniel better see what number? 979.37.12 for all these three numbers. Okay, let me do one more. Uh, Brianna, Miss Harrison, she's doing her homework. She types in 100 for her principal and 6.9 for her APR. She better see 136.05 for her amount. I'm going to go back to my line number. Sue signed up for line 13. Don't take my line, okay? Um, principal is 180 and my APR was 6.7. All right, this is a good point for me to stop. I'm gonna save this file. This is what you're gonna have to submit when you are done, but you're not done yet. I'm done, okay? But I'm gonna ask you guys to scroll down, okay? I'm gonna ask you to scroll down on that same Excel file and answer these four reflection questions. Number one, what would be another way to calculate the total interest rather than just adding up the individual interest amount. Now, what's that asking, okay? Now, listen, in my case, I, Sue, started with $180, right? I started with $180, I want this to be a currency. But when I'm done, guess what? I have $327.33. I made a lot of money. All that money that I made is the interest. You may be talking about how to figure out how much money I made using those two numbers. Reflection question number two. What percentage of the balance end of quarter 36 is the interest and what percentage is the principal? Now these are getting a little mathy. So I do want to see your work on this. I think I want to let you guys try this. Um, but I definitely wanted to help out with the Excel part. If you think you will need more help on these slight, because these are more than reflection questions. These are actually math questions. So if you want me to talk about these ones in another video, you tell me, okay? Tell me, I will be happy to make these for you. Um, reflection question three, what are some of the pros and cons to each of the three methods you have used? I think this is something that you can definitely write about. And number four, which of the three method is your favorite way to calculate the balance and why? There's no right or wrong answer here. Um, reflection question five. What impressors or insights have you gained from this exercise? So reflection question three, four, and five are true reflection questions. But reflection question one and two, they do have correct answers. Mm -hmm. So um, I do um, look forward to reading your reflection questions. But I hope these two videos that I recorded today are helpful to get the Excel part done on this activity, okay?